Welcome to my channel. I'm Joanna Garcia and today I want to share with you some top practice strategies for working on the swing by Chi Hua Tan. Don't you find it sometimes really hard to know how to practice something really effectively? Sometimes you find yourself just playing all the way through and that's not the best way to get you to play this with a complete swing in your step. Is that even a thing? I thought that was spring in your step. If you've ever been on a swing, you'll know that it kind of whooshes through the air and it's got this feeling of effortlessness. And really that's what you want to have in your playing as well. So the top tips today are gonna really help you to focus in on the things that are important so that you can play it like a breeze. Coming up, practice tip number one. Be in charge of the left hand so you can get it out of the way. It's interesting, you know, the left hand has this little rocking motion. And the left hand actually goes down as the right hand's going up. Look. Down, down. And at the same time, the right hand is doing this. sure of the left hand. First of all, can you play it just as chords? Oh, just listen to that. It's a wonderful dissonance and yet in the piece it makes it sound so expressive. So enjoy that. Here's a word of warning. Make sure that you play that absolutely together. How about this? What about turning it the other way around? So that you start from the top and go down. You're gonna get so sure of it that your hand will know exactly what to do. And here's the ultimate test. Can you play the left hand and put a tea towel over the top of your hand so that you can't see it? Here's practice tip number two. Know exactly how the right hand ticks. Now this melody in the right hand is where all the rhythmic interest is. So firstly, I want you to be able to say the rhythm in nonsense words as if you were having a conversation, a little bit like this. Ba 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 and yeah, you sound kind of crazy, but who cares anyway? The next thing is that I want you to play it like you're having a conversation. This is what we call phrasing, and it makes the music have much more interest. Here's me playing it without any phrasing. Listen to how boring this is. Now I'm going to try and play it with a little bit more interest in it, as if I was having a conversation. So I'm going to shape each of the lines a little bit. Here's a long phrase, and grow to here. So can you hear how it grew up to that B? And you can do the same thing when you go a little bit higher. A bit gentler this time. And so on. Playing a melody like this is like reading aloud. You've got to find the shape and the phrasing and the expression. And if you can't play the right hand alone without giving it that shape and expression, then there's no point trying to put the hands together. And finally, practice tip number three. Be able to play the grand arpeggio. Say what? Well, the grand arpeggio is that little bit at the end. Do you know where it starts low and then it goes up kind of in in chords, in skips. Here's the grand arpeggio at the end of the swing. So to practice that, get away from the music. Let's just play around with the actual notes. So your right hand needs to be with your thumb on a G just below middle C. And you're going to create that chord, which is the basis of your arpeggio. Same in your left hand. you pedal down and we're just going to experiment and doodle. So here we go. Cross over. Why not try that again? 
then. You could even try on a different chord, maybe a C. practicing. Once you're so sure of this grand arpeggio, you can put it in context at the end. And do notice that although we expect it to kind of die away towards the end, it does the opposite. It actually crescendos as if the swing was making its way up to the top. Just watch. <laughs> would you like to see top practice tips for? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.